sorry, that's uh, Saka should play left back. And I've seen a lot of Arsenal fans today unhappy at Paul Scholes, who has suggested that like Mainu and the like can Be- Bellingham can help win England games, but slamming Declan Rice saying he isn't releasing the ball fast enough. Um, Arsenal fans obviously out there defending their players. Uh, what do you boys make of, of the Arsenal fans' reaction to the England criticism of their players? Arsenal fans not happy. Like, that's just the standard <laughs> phrase that you can say every week. Because when are Sky's they ever blue, happy? Yeah. Yeah, unless you are bending over, you know what I mean, praising their team to their heel and their players, they're not happy. It is pathetic. It is childish. The the stuff I'm saying, your own legend, Ian Wright, because he said, yeah, I think we should play Saka left back. Like, it's the worst thing. Like, he's come out and just said, yeah, like, called him all the names under the sun for for making a tactical for your citizens and and. All of these, this anti-right propaganda I'm seeing online, it's pathetic. And now, because you know, Rice ain't releasing the ball enough. Oh, wow, what what, what slander. It's true. It's true. Relax, though. It don't change anything. Why are you so insecure about your players? You sit and hype yourselves up to the moon like, yeah, we're title contenders. We're this, we're that. So why do you care? Why are you insecure because certain people say, oh, yeah, he needs to do a little bit better or maybe we should try him in a different position. He's not saying that Saka is no good at, at right wing. He's saying, well, maybe if we play Saka left back, which he has played, it gets Palmer into the team. And now we've got a stronger overall team because we get Saka and we get Palmer. So what? Absolute pathetic crybabies. And this is why I deal with them on a regular basis. Again, not all, not all, but a lot of them, the vocal lot. It, it, it drives me mad. And the Arsenal fans that are more angry at me in the chat for calling this out than they are, their own stupid fans, are the part of the problem. You're just as bad. Call out your... F- Ian Wright is a legend, man. He's an Arsenal legend. How can they sit there and say... I know it's probably some of the younger ones who've never seen him, but that's perfect, man. To say, for, for saying he le- should play left back, get a grip. You know, yeah. You know... So, um, yeah. You know you weren't here last week, Lawless, but hmm. hey, you remember this. Remember we were talking about England and I told you the biggest issue is someone has to get dropped. and Someone will cry when their player is going to get dropped. Mm-hmm. And now we're seeing it. Remember I told you there's a couple players that don't accommodate each other. And Rice is one of the ones that I mentioned. I mentioned multiple ways where I think they could play. And uh, I'm glad. I'm glad it's coming from schools and righty and all that, you know, because when I sat here and I told these men about nine months ago, that Rice is not a lone six in a position-based team or a team that's trying to dominate the ball. They all cried. They all did this. They all did that. And they're going to cry right now in three, two, one. Uh, but, you know, this is why you just you don't win anything. It's been 58 years and you haven't won anything because everyone's their favorite player to play and everything that the issue is not their favorite player. It's everyone else. And now that you're hearing it from legends suggesting similar stuff that I suggested, it's a bit spooky. You know, and I'm not surprised. As I said, I'm not surprised. No one wants their favorite player to be dropped, but it is the reality. And there's going to be chaos no matter what happens. Uh, Rice should be dropped, in my opinion. I said that midfield probably, I didn't even say it needs Mino. I said it probably needs Wharton because you need someone that picks up the ball off the back line. Uh, You know, I I suggested another way where you kind of get Stones to invert into the midfield. But to be fair, I don't expect Southgate to understand how to do that. Only Pep can do that. So I'm like, at least try to fix the personnel in the midfield and try to put in a Wharton, try to put in a Menu, Keep Bellingham because Bellingham at least can get you some goals. But Rice does not have the same role that he has for Arsenal. So he's not needed in this team. I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry if it's going to hurt anyone's feelings. You do not need Rice in that midfield with Bellingham. You need someone who's a little bit better on the ball. It is no surprise that last game when Menu came on and Cole Palmer came on, you saw a little bit. But a little bit more of ball movement, a little bit more possession, a little bit more of give and go and all that stuff. That one ball that, that Cole Palmer played in behind the defender that Mano had and he squared it into the box, but no one was there. You didn't see little bits of this until these two came on. So when you see Wrighty suggesting Saka to move left back, well, guess what? You don't have a left back. So he's trying to see, okay, what is the closest solution we have to not having a left back? Who is left-footed that we can put there and kind of fit what the manager is trying to do? Saka. Is it too much of a sacrifice to move Saka from right wing to left back? 
No. Why? Because we can put in Cole Palmer. Can Cole Palmer play off Foden and Manu and, 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 and Kane and actually make us look a little bit better? While now you have Saka on the other side overlapping with whoever's on the left. Let's say it's Anthony Gordon, whatever, and it's making the left side look better. Yes. These moves automatically make your team better. But you are so upset and in your feelings because you don't want a uh, little ass Saka moving out of his position because you think it's disrespectful. It, you, when you look at the, the greatest nations that have won trophies, someone was played out of position. Someone had to sacrifice for someone who is better than him. And no one here, and this is why I said England don't win anything, is because everyone is so stuck up when it comes to their players and no one wants to sacrifice their players having a lesser role or being benched or being played out of position. No one says, you know what, when you look at Saka's attributes, what does he have? He has pace, he has power, he's left-footed, he holds the width well. Would he be a decent level? Has he played left-back before? Yes, he did. So maybe he could help us. No one is thinking about it like that. Everyone is so worried, oh, but now the Chelsea fans are going to troll me if Cole Palmer plays there and he looks better. Oh, now if Foden does well, I'm going to look bad when it comes to the Man City fans. It's pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic. And as I said, and I'm going to say it again, because I, I just want to rattle them. I love rattling them. This is why your nation does not win anything, because you all think that you know football more than you do. It is the only nation that has so much resources and no one wants to make the right decision because everyone wants to fit their own agenda. If Harry Kane should be dropped tomorrow for you to win, you guys should be for it. If Foden has to be dropped tomorrow for you to win, you should be for it. If Bellingham has to be dropped tomorrow for you to win, you should be for it. But everyone is looking for agendas rather than what is good for this team. Mm -hmm. Because if they win with Saka and left back, oh, imagine the agendas. Oh, we only won because Saka wasn't playing his best position. And everyone's scared about it. But I, I'm, I'm not surprised. Do you, know, do you know what's crazy? Listen, there's so much truth in what you said it, it, in terms of the agendas people have. And I kind of understand it if you're not an England fan. And like yourself, Staffy, and you're defending Maynu because you've got no dog in the fight. You don't support England. Part of me was annoyed that he was a Man United player, Maynu, when I was suggesting he had to come on from come into the team a couple of games ago because people were just, he's not a controller, Terry. He can't control the tempo. You're just saying it because he's a Man United player. Bruv, I don't really want a Man United player going into an underperforming uh, England team because of the shit they get. But I believe a player like Manu is needed to make us look better. And we did start to improve in the second half. But again, the manager is so stupid. He brings in Manu. We get a bit more control in the middle, but then he puts Bellingham out on the wing. So you're still as imbalanced as you were in the first half, but it's just in a different pocket of the, of the field now. I am open for anybody to be dropped from this England team. For us to be able to win. I don't view... Rice right now, for me, is not an Arsenal player. Mainu is not a Man United player. They're England. And it's... But we get this at club level. I don't... And if you notice how the unsuccessful clubs... Big clubs that have been unsuccessful for a period of time. Their love affair with players is so different to the fans of successful clubs. Because the fans of successful clubs understand that... Like City fans... It feels like every year there's two or three players that get rotated in, rotated out. Last season, you barely saw John Stones. Season before, he was a stalwart. There was a couple of years where Ilka Gundogan was the man. And then there's other seasons where he, he was a little bit more bit part in comparison. And that's because of form, meritocracy, and, and adjustments to the system. But you didn't see really many City fans complaining why, because they were winning. And I think England fans are in this mold, coupled with their club tribalism, where it's like, Oh, I need Kane to be... Like, there, there are Spurs fans who, like the other day I suggested, I, I wouldn't mind dropping Harry Kane. That was a suggestion. The amount of Spurs fans in my DMs, you just don't want Kane to win a trophy. I'm like, no, I'm desperate for Kane to win a trophy. But I'm more desperate for England to win a trophy. So I'd love What's it got to do with him anyway? He's not at their club anymore. Well, I don't know if he's going to change anything. But, but they obviously, from I, I think it's because some Spurs fans, if England would have win this Euros and Kane was the man, I think some Spurs fans, you know, like, I mean this in a nice way, you know how West Ham uh, always West Ham say you won the World Cup, right? Yeah. When they can't uh, say that because he don't play for them anymore. I know though. it's even more warped. At least you had it. Do you know what I loved about you guys saying that as well? Obviously, I used to work right by your old stadium. You had you had a statue with with your boys in it. What I loved is that West Ham United had a statue to commemorate the legends of their club in the England team, but they also had a Man United player in their statue as well because Sir Bobby Charlton was there with in the same statue. So I always love that. That's why I never understood the, the disrespect that clubs gave each other. I was like, they've got one of our legends as a, a statue of him outside their stadium and we're hating on you. It didn't make sense to me. But um, 
yeah, I, I just, I want us to win. And I'm open for anyone and everyone coming into this team to make us more balanced. And I don't think right he was correct about playing Saka at left back. But there's some mileage in putting Saka on the left-hand side because Trippier is inverting. People are saying play Gomez there. Gomez will invert. He's also right-footed. We need someone who can hold the width naturally on that side. And look, Anthony Gordon, I think, is a good example, but he's still going to cut in. I think we need someone that can spread the play. Ironically, we really, I, know he's, I don't know if he is left-footed or not, but we really could do with Jack Grealish over right. there right now to spread that play because we become so narrow and easy to defend against. And this is the problem. I, I would love for Saka and Kane, these players that have done well for England in the last three or four years, to be integral to us winning the Euros this year. But I want England to win it more than I want them to be the stars of the team. And that has to be the mindset at club and at country level, that the team winning is the most important element. And sometimes your favorite guy, I'm sure there were players that won the World Cup with Spain who sat on that bench, who, you know, they might have been Arsenal fans or Barca fans or Madrid fans, and I want my guy in the team. But when Spain lifted that trophy, do you think any Spaniard cared? No. Terry, Terry more than half that team was Barca. You think, you think they didn't celebrate in Madrid? <laughs> I actually wanted to make, give a good example. I, and I was pretty young when I watched that World Cup. Go, go back and watch uh, Italy in 2006. Their front line was stacked. Del Piero, Totti, uh, um, what's his name? Inzaghi. I forgot who else. I think, uh, was it Luca Toni? Or what's the other guy? I forgot the, the guy's name. He used to celebrate with. It might have been Luca Tony. When you look at that uh, World Cup, go back and watch the goals, Terry. I, I recommend this to anyone. You'll see that everyone had like one or two goals. Like I think Inzaghi only had like one or two goals in the group stage and that was it. Didn't really play as much. I think Totti had like one penalty goal. Del Piero scored like two goals. One of them was against Germany in the semifinal. They all played limited roles, but at the end of the day, they won the whole thing. No one really looked at that front line. I was like, yeah, Del Piero carried, Totti carried, uh, Nzaki carried, uh, Tony carried. No one. You go back and look at them. Everyone actually played a role in, in, the, in that story. Everyone had that, just one chapter. And I feel like this is what some of the England fans don't uh, 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 accept or understand. You can have one game where like Saka gets you through like one team. Like, yeah, he scores a brace or whatever. But then it doesn't mean anything if he doesn't do anything for the rest of the tournament. Because I do would expect another game where like, yeah, Today, Foden turned up. Today, Kane turned up. Today, I don't know, Bellingham turned up. This is what is meant to be about a, a squad in an international tournament. Sometimes you have to play the opposition anyways by their strength so you change how you play. Because I don't expect England to line up against Slovakia in two days the same way they'll line up if they play, if they qualify and they play, let's say, the Netherlands. Because they both have different qualities. It, this whole notion that the, all these players must play and they could not bench anyone, it just makes no sense to me. Because if you play France, I expect, uh, uh, what's his name, Carl Walker to play. He's the first per person on the, on the pitch. But if you play Slovakia, I expect Trent to be the first player mm. on the pitch. But I don't think people comprehend that because they people, think everyone yeah. needs to play and not lose England, their England fans have got to go back and just look at, nine, at 1966. Jeff Hurst wasn't even playing in the group stages. Jimmy Greaves was considered the greatest striker in the world at that particular moment in time. He was on the bench for the final as an example and i understand the just really crazy like there's always been tribalism in football and to a degree it's great for the game that there is rivalry but tribalism became toxic in the the, the late 70s and in the 80s through hooliganism and it's kind of not gone away i mean i know there's still some hooliganism that goes on but it isn't as widespread as it used to be but it seems to have it seems to have, it's almost like the banter era of football is like the new version of hooliganism. It's almost, I don't care how bad it impacts my team. Because some people do it to their own team. Some people, it's like, I'm going to try and sabotage my own team with nonsense. It's almost, it's, it's sick. It, it's absolutely crazy. There was no way in 1966, Man City fans and, Liv and, and, and Liverpool fans wanted Bobby Charlton to have stinkers for England. There was no way that Spurs fans, who loved Jimmy Greaves at the time, by the way, wanted Sir Jeff Hurst to not get a hat-trick in the final because he was West Ham. This, that level of tribalism is, the, it is just it is an absolute abomination. I want Man United to win. I want my players to be the best. But when they put on an England jersey, 
They're English. They're representing our nation. Get behind them. Drop your... And I know what people want. They want Saka or they want Mainu or they want Kane or they want Gordon to be the star and the winner. So it's like a badge of honour for their club. No, it's a badge of honour for England. Your club has nothing to do with it. And that element needs to be dropped. So no, I, I totally agree. I, I totally, totally agree. And by the way, if you don't support England, if you're not English, I kind of get you back in your player. I get it. I get it. But it's the English fans doing it. Why? I, don't, I actually I don't didn't. Understand. I was upset That's when that. when it was told that Mane was going to start. I was so upset. I was like, I don't. When he came on on uh, halftime, I didn't want him to play. I was doing a watch. I was like, fuck. Because now I actually got to support me. I wanted him on the bench because I don't want to support England. I was like, if he comes on, he makes him good. I don't want him to come on. So I was like, no, no, stay on the bench. So I'm actually the opposite. I don't want none of the United players to, to, to play. Put <laughs> him on the bench so he doesn't get the blame. But it's good. But it's good for. I've, it obviously, he's a young player. It's good for his development. You know what I mean? I think it's a benefit. Under a Southgate, there's no development under Southgate. Oh, yeah, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> it's experience. I'll tell you this. He'll get international experience, which is good because he's 18 and he's playing on the biggest stage uh, of, of, of football. Other than that, I, I, I don't want to see him. I know the quality that he brings. Uh, I'd rather people think that he stinks, like they said. Like, I still have people that come to my channel, like, yeah, man was overrated. And I'm like, yep, he is overrated. Keep him on the bench. I have no problem. Right. It's funny because when I was saying that we uh, mainly had to come on, it, it, I'm not even going to mention the clubs because it'll trigger people, but the usual suspects just slagging him off. He ain't this, he ain't that, he ain't the other. And I'm sitting there going, you know he is. What I'm not even saying he's a finished article, but he's what we needed, or partly what we needed. But you're just so worried that if he comes in and we look better, it's going to be a, a, a notch on the bedpost for Man United. And your hatred of Man United is getting in your way of being objective on this particular subject. It's crazy to me.